how to name individual cells, we also know how to name cell ranges now. And what I want to talk about is one of the benefits of using these names or creating these names. And that is using them in a formula. So as an example, I have a basic spreadsheet here. I want to take the order subtotal, which is here, times the tax amount that I want to charge to calculate the tax on each of these order lines. So I'm just going to do a basic formula. I'm going to say this cell, D2, times the tax amount, which is in B10. And I'm going to press enter and it works. Now, as soon as I fill this down, it no longer works. And that's because of Excel shifting a cell reference which is going to be really handy when we start talking about names here. But for now, let's explain what's going on. So the first cell is D2 times B10. And this everything's okay. We put that formula in. It's this cell times the tax, no problem. As soon as I check my next formula, it says D3. That part's right. That's correct. Times B11. You see that's shifted down. So we could absolutely change this amount or this uh, cell reference here to fix the problem. But if I had a lot of rows, I don't want to have to edit all of those formulas and make sure that it's all referencing B10. Now, we can fix this by using dollar signs, and we'll talk about that in another video here. But for now, I wanna fix this problem by using a name. And it's not only going to fix the problem, it's gonna make the formula a little bit easy to easier to interpret as well. So the first step is gonna be giving this cell a name. So I'm gonna click on B10, I'm gonna type tax percent. Okay, remember no spaces in formula names, or uh, sorry, in uh, cell names. And uh, I put an underscore instead, and cannot start with a number. So I'm gonna go to my formula here in E2, and instead of referencing B10 as a cell reference, I'm actually going to use the name. So as soon as I start typing it in, Excel automatically says, is this the name you're referring to? And I can always double click on that to put it in, or I could have typed the whole thing. When I press enter, I get the same formula result, except you'll notice the formula instantly makes more sense. So it's saying D2, which is this amount, times the tax percentage, which I can see right here. I don't have to go and investigate what is cell B10. It's all just right in front of me. Another added advantage is if I copy this formula down like I did before, and it stopped working. Well, this time, it's automatically kept that reference of tax percent. And that's because when we actually use cell names in a formula, Excel doesn't automatically shift those names. So it's some, it's using something called an absolute reference. It means when I use the name tax percent, it is always going to refer to cell B10 on the names and formula sheet. Okay, so that can be useful in various formulas. Let's go look at another example, except in this time, let's not use an individual cell, we'll use a cell range. So in a previous video, we talked about giving a, a name to a range of cells. So in this case, I've called this Jan Sale Details. And instead of having sum of B2 to B6, which again, I'd have to track down to see that information, what I can do instead is I can put in the name. Again, as soon as I start typing in the name, it gives me any names in this file that actually start with what I've typed. So I would like to use Jan Sale Details. You see it highlights that range in the background. I hit enter. I'm getting the same result, but again, my formula is more meaningful instantly. It says equals the sum of Jan sale details. It doesn't say equals the sum of B2 to B6, which I'd have to go track down. So this can be applied to any formula. You can reference a name instead of the actual cells. Now this does require a bit more work. We'd have to go and create the names and we have to go apply them and use them in the formulas. There's tricks to make that whole process a lot faster and we'll talk about that in the upcoming videos.